what we're going to do is here is just get some practice with using the binomial model and GeoGebra for calculating various scenarios. So we have here is an Olympic archer who's able to hit the bullseye 80% of the time. We want to assume each shot is independent, and we want to look at if he shoots this, his arrow six times, what's the probability of getting each of the following results. So something we have here is they're telling us number of trials is six. And then what we have is this 80%, and we'll actually talk about the two scenarios where that's the success or the failure. Um, this first scenario, his first bullseye comes on the third area. So, he, so here we're looking for a bullseye. So our probability of success would be that 0.8 and probability of failure would be that 0.2. So this is describing a specific sequence of events in that he's getting his bullseye on the third arrow. So that means that it has to go fail and then fail and then success. So the sequence of events is set, so we can just calculate, take that 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8. So this actually doesn't use the binomial model, and that's because it's a set sequence of events. So if we calculate that, that will give us a 0 0.032. So a 3.2% chance the bullseye comes on the third arrow. Then with this scenario, we want to look at he misses the bullseye at least once. So this scenario, we're actually looking for that he misses the bullseye. So with that, what we can do is set our probability of success to be 0.2. And then our probability of failure is actually making the bullseye with 0.8. So Q is 0.8 there. And what we can do is use GeoGebra here, because this is going to be binomial. There's many different ways that this can occur. So what we're going to do is look for this probability of more than or equal to 1. So we're going to go to GeoGebra. We're going to make our number of trials 6. Probability of success is 0.2. And we want this idea of more than or equal to 1. So at least 1, so 1 should be our least value, and then we want everything above. So for this, we need that right tail. So I'm going to switch over to right-sided, and I want this probability of x more than or equal to 1. And then just hit, hit Enter so everything adjusts, and that should be a 0 0.7379. So we get out this 0.1379. Nine. So 13.79% chance he misses the bullseye at least once. Um, on this scenario, his first bullseye comes on the fourth or fifth arrow. And actually, this again is setting a specific sequence of events, saying it either happens on the fourth or the fifth. So with or, we're going to have this addition scenario. So first bullseye on the fourth, that would mean that they, well, let's see, we're looking for bullseyes, so now we're back to probability of success is 0.8, probability of failure is 0.2, so we want to see fail three times in a row, so 0.2 cubed, and then success, which is that 0.8. Or, so we're adding this with, they need to fail four times in a row, and then have that fifth shot, the success. So this is going to calculate that probability. We need to add them since it's the or case. And this probability is going to be uh, 0 0.0077. So 0.77% chance his first bullseye comes on the fourth or the fifth arrow. So again, no binomial there since it's a specific sequence of events. Um, but this next one, he gets exactly four bullseyes. So probability of success is 0.8 here. Probability of failure is 0.2. And this is the exact case. So we want the probability of him making exactly four. And we need binomial here because there's many different ways that this can occur. So we're going to go to GeoGebra and make sure we have these six trials. Probability of success is 0.8. And we want to look at this exactly four scenario. So for exactly four, that's where we look on this right-hand side. 
and look at where k is equal to 4 and that number next to it's the probability. So a 0 0.2458. So there is a 24.58% chance of making exactly four bullseyes. Now these next two use words that come up a lot here. You're going to see at least and at most. At least is always going to give you the least value that you want to see, and then you want everything above. So what's going to happen is the at least case is always right-sided, because in terms of shading your graph, you always want at that value and more. So at least will give you this right-hand shading. At most is giving you the largest value that you want to see, so that's going to be left-sided. So with that curve, you're going to have this largest value, and then you want everything below it. So for he gets at least four bullseyes, probability of x being more than or equal to four is what we're looking for here. So at least is going to bring through that more than or equal to sign. So in GeoGebra, we want right-sided, and we want to start at four. So we type in four. And then what's nice with GeoGebra, it gives you the visual so you can see what it's shading. And that probability is going to be a 0 0.9011. So 90.11% chance he gets at least four bullseyes. Then for at most, this is where we want probability of x. And then we're going to be less than or equal to that number of four. So this will go to left-sided in GeoGebra, and we want less than or equal to 4, and that probability is a 0.3446. So that's a 34.46% chance he gets at most four bullseyes. Um, then our expected value in standard deviation so expected value, that's going to be our mean, and standard deviation, standard deviation. And those are given in GeoGebra in that upper left-hand corner. So we're going to see a 4.8 and that 0.9798 for our mean and standard deviation. So with that, mean of 4.8 and standard deviation of 0.9798. So what this is telling us is we expect him to get 4.8 bullseyes out of the six attempts. And on average, that deviates by 0.9798 um, bullseyes. You can round these. Like in terms of shooting an arrow, you can't really make 0.9798 of a bullseye. So we could say is we expect him to get five bullseyes. And on average, that deviates by about one.